What's up guys? Hope you're having a great day today. I know I am! Woo -hoo! Originally I was gonna film this with the top down, but it started raining, so can't do that one, unfortunately. So I never really talked about what this video is. So in this video we're gonna be discussing if the BMW Z3 is a good first car. And I'd say I'm in an interesting position to answer that question because this BMW Z3 that we are in is my first car, for those of you guys who didn't know. But uh, I have my I have my views on it. I'm not gonna say that, oh, the Z3 is my first car, it should be your first car too, no. Um, I mean, everyone has their own views on it. Some people think, yeah, no, Z3 would be a good first car. Other people be like, no. So today we're gonna go over the pros and cons of the Z3 being a first car. So let's get started. Ah, but first I wanted to do that. So, uh, I pulled over in a random gas station parking lot. I was driving on the back roads, and this is the first, like, what is it? Then? So, I'm pulled over right now at a random gas station parking lot. Uh, literally, I was driving on the back roads, and this is the first spot I saw where I could pull over and uh, park the Z3 so that I can discuss the first point of having the Z3 as a first car, which is that the Z3... It's not the fastest car in the world, and that's both a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because with your first car, you don't want it to be the f extremely fast. Otherwise, you won't be able to understand the limits of it and uh, push it to said limits. But on the other side, there's obviously a stigma around having a slow car uh, in the car community nowadays. But for me personally, I would rather drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. And so that's why I, that's my first point when it comes to having the Z3 as a first car. I'm not really taking a side on this one because there's pros and cons to having the Z3 as a first car. So the second point to make is that the Z3, the Z3 is an easy car to work on. Uh, and what I mean by that is like compared to say something like a modern car, like let's use a Honda Civic for example. In the Civic, you have a lot of plastic components and just overcomplicated bits that you'd need to remove. Uh, versus in this car, the engine bay is a lot more open and it's a lot more accessible to see things. If you don't believe me, well, look, take a look for yourself. So here we are under the hood of the Z3. And to prove my point on what I was saying earlier about the hood being a lot very open, as you can see, there's nothing here, which there is supposed to be something, but we have removed it to prevent overheating. But even in that case, BMW doesn't put anything here or in this little compartment right here, making it very accessible. Along with that, your oil filter is right there. So when you're doing an oil change, rather than having to go underneath the car and it being a whole process to remove your oil filter, you just gotta move some wires and then you can easily take the oil filter out with the proper tool. If that's not easy to work on, I don't know what is. That being said, on the other side, it can be very hard to find parts for this car, I've noticed. Uh, one example of, oh my God, that guy nearly just hit a car. That being said, on the flip side, it's very hard to find parts for the Z3, I've noticed. It's not gonna come as easy as, say, finding a part for a Honda Civic or a Miata. This car doesn't have too many parts built for it, especially nowadays. And one prime example of that is the Benz solenoid. Uh, as I have shown you guys in the past, the Z3 had a messed up Benz solenoid, which has now been fixed. However, trying to find that part took a very long time, but we obviously eventually got to finding it. It was a process though. So I do want to bring up that this car is a very, very cool car. It's a convertible, it's used in a James Bond film, it's a beautiful style, all of that. However, that being said, the insurance can be a little bit pricey on this car. So this 1998 BMW Z3, with, a, with someone who has no accidents on their record. Uh, I am under 25 years old though, to keep that in mind. I pay about $75 a month for this car. 
in insurance, which is crazy compared to cars like a Civic, Miata, some even something like a, the Prius. But yeah, for $75 a month, I pay for this, which it, to some people may be crazy, other people it may not. I've heard some people who own exotic cars might not even have to pay this price, but I mean, everyone has their own individual insurance price. Mine may be different from yours, but yeah. So a common question I get asked about this car is, does it pick up girls? Like, do girls like this car? And the answer is, no, not from my experience. I haven't really seen that many girls care about this car. And for me personally, if you have to use a car to attract people to you, then you might want to look inwards more and think and reflect a bit. So the obvious point that I have not brought up yet is that the Z3 is fun. Like, yes, the car only has about 130 horsepower and zero to 60 in like seven seconds, but it's still a very fun car for that. Obviously, I've said this on several occasions, but it's a very small, great handling chassis that can just be that can just be a thrill to drive in the back roads. That being said, maintenance can sometimes be a nightmare on these cars, not in terms of like how often they break, even though, yeah, I've had some issues with that, but most of the time it can just be in terms of the cost. Like, for example, to do my oil filter housing and two drive belts was $600 on this car, which is just crazy to believe. If you're gonna get this uh, instead of something like a Civic or a Miata, watch out for that. With the repair costs, you either gotta be willing to dish out a little bit extra on repairs to a mechanic or uh, learn how to do it yourself. And as I mentioned before, it's very e it has a very open b engine bay for you to work on. So, I mean, yeah. So the final point that I wanna make is about the visibility in the Z3. It can be good, but it can also be bad. So, well, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So I'm in the Z3 right now uh, with the top down. And when it's in this form with the top down, windows down, all that, it's very visible. I can look out and see very easily behind me. I can also look right over and it's very easy to see where I am. This is fine. The issue comes when we put the top up. This process, I tell you, never gets any easier. This is one where you might want to just step out of the car because, oh my god! Oh god. Every time I do that from the inside of the car, it just hurts to do. I would rather just get out of the car at that point, put the top up, and then uh, continue. So now the top is up in the Z3, windows rolled up, all of that, and as you can see, it is very hard to see behind you. There's like no back glass or anything like that. And you only have a very little amount of room, which may look like a lot on camera, but is not that much. In fact, there is a whole bench over there hiding behind this black panel, which is just crazy. And this side, it's no better. So when you're driving in traffic, it's always best to look behind you and through your mirrors in this car. Well, actually to be fair, that's for any car but especially in this car. And just like that, today's video is in fact over. I did want to quickly point out one thing, and that is that everyone owns a car for a different reason. Some people want something a little more sporty, other people need something practical, other people want something that can haul a lot of people, store a lot of stuff, etc., etc. For me personally, I wanted something a bit more sporty, and there's a lot of people out there that do want that. Uh, this video is more meant for them, uh, obviously, for people who need something a bit more practical, there's a lot of options out there. But this video isn't really here to talk about that. But yeah, if you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Let me know how you feel about this video in the comments below. It, and down while you're down there, let me know where your first car was. Or if you're still looking for your first car, let me know what you're planning to get. And if you liked what you're seeing, feel free to leave subscribe. But just like that, I'm out. I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.